How do you picture yourself? What's that image that you have of yourself in your mind? Whatever you think of yourself determines what's possible for your life. That's what this episode is about. You're listening to Pure Light, where we explore how you can believe in yourself and be happy with who you are so that you feel worthy of your craziest dreams and confident in your power to make them happen. My name is Aili. I'm a coach, writer, and kundalini yoga and meditation teacher. This is episode 78. I was at a family event recently and talking to a cousin who graduated from law school and got called to the bar. And she was telling me about how now she sees the world through the filter of risk. So everything she looks at, she thinks of in terms of like, what are the potential liabilities here? What could, what could we be sued for? And what can we do to minimize that risk? So after I graduated from engineering, I kind of had the same thing, but from a logical perspective, because you could pretty much explain everything with some kind of formula or theory when I was in school. So that's how I saw the world through the perspective of everything has to make sense and be logical and follow the rules and formulas. A few years after I graduated, I was in a bookstore, and I saw Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth there, and I felt really drawn to it. There was something magnetic about it. I wanted to go and pick it up and look at it and buy it, but there was something in me that didn't allow me to do that. It was some kind of block, and I I couldn't really say what it was. I just felt like I couldn't do it. It was really weird because I wanted to pick it up and get it, but I could not bring myself to do it. And it was only three years later that I finally got a copy of the book and I read it and I started to kind of understand what that initial hesitation was because a new earth isn't something that you can just digest mentally. It's not something that makes sense logically. It's based on experiential truths. So if you're in your head trying to understand it analytically, trying to see the logic behind it, it isn't going to make sense in that way. And so now in retrospect, I can see that the time that I first came across the book, like the reason that I didn't pick it up was because it didn't align with who I thought I was. I was still so wrapped up in the worldview that everything has to make sense that I couldn't even contemplate stepping outside that to read something that was on the spiritual side of the spectrum. I think I was afraid it would be a little woo-woo and I was not ready to go there. Like I was not prepared to allow myself to go there. So by default, you'll never do anything that doesn't align with who you think you are, which means that what you think of yourself determines what is possible for your life. When you have an idea in your head about who you are, you make decisions based on that. And it can be really hard to give yourself permission to deviate from that. I know this story was about allowing myself to explore things that I feel drawn to, but the same principle applies to every aspect of life. So career, relationships, travel, health, like you name it. Because if you don't believe that you can do better, you won't even try. And if you don't believe that you deserve more, you won't ask for it or seek it. You'll look for reasons to confirm whatever it is you believe. And then use that as evidence to prove your point and keep yourself where you are. Because you interpret everything through the lens of what you already believe. This is called confirmation bias, and it's a real thing. So if you're feeling like something that you want is out of reach, whether it's a relationship, a job, a degree, whatever it is, your self-image could be the limiting factor. Because what you think of yourself determines what you think you're worthy of receiving. It also determines what you believe you're capable of. So if you don't believe you're capable or worthy, you're likely to get in your own way to prevent the thing that you want from happening. I was at an alt MBA meetup a couple years ago with Seth Godin. And the first thing that I wrote down from what he said was this status roles inform all the decisions someone makes on a journey. You need to be able to see yourself at the next level Otherwise, you'll sabotage yourself. So it's really important to be able to see yourself at the next level. And if you don't yet see yourself at the next level, it's important to be able to change what you think of yourself so that you can see that. Because that's the only way you'll really start to move towards it. So in the next episode, I'll talk about how to change your self-image. Be sure to subscribe to Pure Light wherever you listen to podcasts to get that. 
And you can also go to purelightpodcast.com to listen to all the episodes. As soon as they're published, they're on there. And if you need help seeing yourself in a new light, I send out emails every Sunday to help you see how you can be the you that you love. If you want to get those in your inbox, sign up at purelightpodcast.com. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, may you be guided by your light.